How's it going guys? It's another update. Not producing near as much power anymore because I can't pull as much power because I'm using the smaller inverter. Um, so my batteries are just pretty much always fully charged. 3000 watt inverter doing amazing. It has, believe it or not, the 3000 watt actually has more protections built into it. It has um, an overheat and uh, an overload protection where the, the 8000 watt reliable uh, only has over, it does have overheat uh, circuit that turns the fans on, but I don't believe that circuit uh, will shut it down at a certain temperature. And if it does, what happens is, uh, because this is rated at 8,000 watts, which it can do cold, but can't really do hot, um, the MOSFETs fits fry if you try pulling their... Uh, your max wattage out of it so if you're trying to pull like seven eight thousand watts when it's hot like I did that's when it's gonna blow up it's not gonna protect itself I'm not sure if it shuts down due to thermal other than that but we're gonna be fixing all these problems these little problems that it has it's not the biggest deal especially for me because I can fix this no problem oh it's it's uh, half of these uh, MOSFETs here so it's like eight MOSFETs or something I gotta replace here it's eight MOSFETs on the input side and I should have a working inverter again and I went ahead and ordered another one because I know what it can do now I know what I can't do and it's very impressive because this was running more than this can run continuous but this thing has way better protection circuitry but you pay for that this is this one's three grand that one is about a thousand bucks so but this one's gonna last like this if this didn't last me 10 years I would be extremely disappointed so th there is a difference um, but I'm gonna show you how to make one of these more reliable make it really good and uh, so this just giving you a little hint I got my my input MOSFETs let's see if this will focus on here come on there we go these are the inf input fets these ones aren't too pricey they're a couple bucks each the output fets on the other hand they're actually pretty pricey um, they're like four bucks each or something like that so I bought 20 of those almost spent 100 bucks on uh, just fets alone and then this is gonna be part of my uh, making it more reliable uh, in a way and I have these radiators. I'm going to just do this to the one. I have two of these inverters, but I'm only going to do uh, this to the one of them uh, for reliability at, at first. I might order some more. But uh, I got one for the input. I got one for the output. Because I don't know if... I just don't want there to be any uh, power conducting in between the two... Uh, input and output boards because they're completely separate so I'm going to keep that apart um, and I bought, bought a bunch of uh, copper square uh, heat sinks or heat blocks uh, that go they're going to be like I'll have like one two three mounted on here to keep it nice and cool I might have two in here Let's see I think I bought eight total so one two three four five six seven eight that doesn't leave me enough maybe only this is the diode stage, so it might not need much. So I might go, hmm, we'll see. I might only have, be able to put two, one, two, two. Yeah, that might be more like it because, like, these these blocks, should, they're, they're about, I don't know, about that big, inch and a half wide, two inches wide. So if I put one here, one here, the two should be able to take care of this heat sink pretty well. And then... I might put one there so this is the output stage this is the input stage so if I have four in the input stage and three on the output stage I think I'll be good I might be able to put even uh, three on this bigger heat sink so I'll have three on this so four and four two and two yeah I might be able to make something like that work we'll see this is gonna be the gu guinea pig now I'm gonna fix it we're gonna get it back up and running and we're gonna have some fun with it Water cooling. I think this is probably, I don't know if it is, I haven't looked it up, if this is the first water cooled um, 
You can see through it there. Inverter, but it's going to be one of the first, if not, if not the first. And we're going to see uh, the difference. And I'm going to have two inver inverters, so I'll be able to run equal loads. I'm going to be able to see exactly the heat differences between the two. I'm pretty excited, actually, to do this test. But this reliable inverter has been working fantastic. It runs two window air conditioners. Actually, it runs, yeah, it runs two window air conditioners, my computer, my projector, my lights, and all that stuff. And then this reliable electric over here, that's my portable one. That is uh, 3,000 watts as well, but that's 48 volts. That one runs uh, an 8,000 BTU window air conditioner and whatever else I feel like running. But the batteries are fairly dead because it's been overcast all day. So, wind turbine spinning a little bit, but anyways, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video, I got lots of content coming, I'm just uh, pretty busy at the moment, so just a little dry spell I guess, anyways, who wants to have a giveaway, I wish I could give this away, you guys would love this, this is a sweet EV battery. But shipping these things costs a fortune. So, I am going to do a giveaway of this 3000 watt inverter. This is the one I repaired. It does work. It doesn't do the full 3000 watts anymore, but it does like 1500 to 2000, something like that. And, uh, but it puts out, I got to let you guys know, it puts out 50 hertz. So not everything can run off this. It's 120 volts at 50 hertz. Um... Most, almost everything can run off of 50 hertz, but you just got to read the back before you uh, plug it in. Don't go plug in your $2,000 or $3,000 TV without seeing if it can run off 50 hertz. So, yeah, that would be a sweet giveaway. Someone would really like this inverter. Maybe you'll enjoy it a bit. Thanks for watching.